Welcome to this final and fourth installment on a teaching I've entitled The Forgotten Beatitude. When queried by John as to his activities, you remember that Jesus said, Blessed is he who is not offended, who doesn't trip over the way I conduct my affairs. That's a very relevant beatitude because, as I said in closing yesterday, all of us are tempted to get offended by what Jesus does and what Jesus doesn't do. And there's a good reason for that. We're all uncomfortable with the mysteries of God, the mysteries of God. And we come by that discomfort naturally. First of all, we come by it internally because we are the descendants of Adam and Eve, our shared grandparents. And you remember Adam and Eve launched us into the mess we currently find ourselves in precisely because they couldn't accept a mystery of God. God had told them to eat from every tree in the garden but one. They couldn't understand why he prohibited them from eating that one. But rather than not being offended by that command, they were offended. And in pride and a desire for control and with Satan lying in their ear, they sought to solve the mystery by acting sinfully. And as we know, the rest is history. And we have inherited from them that tendency to be very uncomfortable with the mysteries of God. In addition, our culture encourages us to be uncomfortable with mystery because this humanistic, secular culture we live in is very uncomfortable with the mysteries of God because the mysteries of God remind modern man that he doesn't have everything by the tail, that he hasn't figured out everything, that he can't control everything. And many find that an uncomfortable message. They would rather believe that through human initiative and human endeavors and human science, they can address the deep questions that have perplexed man for centuries. You see, man finding his own answers exalts us. But accepting the mysteries of God and saying, there are things we will not understand, but God knows best, that humbles us. It keeps us in our place. It reminds us that only God stands at the center of the universe. Our place is never center stage. Our place is always in the wings. And that's an unpopular message to a culture that is literally full of itself. We need to practice the forgotten beatitude. And the times by faith just accept I don't understand it, God. And I have my doubts, but I'm going to trust you. And here's why. Discipleship, growing in grace and in the knowledge of God, is really the process of exchanging an imaginary world that exists only in our minds, a world where we're at the center, for the real world, the world that God has created, where God and God alone is at the center. And much as we'd like to think otherwise, you and I don't see things as they really are. Listen to me, we see things as we really are. Let me say it again, we don't see things as they really are, we see things as we really are. We interpret everything through the lenses of our own heart, our own mind, our own soul. Sometimes those lenses get blurred. My wife recently said, what did you do to fix the backup camera on my Honda? She said it was blurry all winter, now it's crystal clear. I said, I didn't fix the camera, I just washed the car. There was just dirt on the lens. We all begin life with dirty lenses, and so we don't see things as they are. They, we see things the way we are, and God wants to change that. And the mysteries and the doubts they produce before they produce deeper understanding are all a part of getting rid of those vain imaginations and coming to truth. So in the end, the mysteries of God aren't problems to be solved. No, they're invitations to realities that we've not yet experienced. I believe John doubted with fresh, or died, excuse me, with fresh doubts when, like an ISIS captive today, he was made to kneel and then subsequently was beheaded. But seconds after he died with doubts, he stood face to face with his Messiah and all of those doubts were removed, as your doubts and my doubts will be removed one day. 
Follow the forgotten beatitude. Don't be offended by the way God does his business. And if you'll do that, you'll not only grow in grace, you'll discover the truth of something Chesterton said. He said, the riddles of God are preferable to the solutions of men. Walk in the forgotten beatitude. Maintain peace in your soul. And God bless you.